All right, this presentation is on Posse Solberg. He's a Finnish educator, author, scholar. He's done a lot of uh, policy advising and international research around the globe. So in a nutshell, actually three nutshells because he's done so much, it doesn't fit in a single nutshell. He has been a former director for the Finnish Ministry of Education. He's been a policy advisor in many organizations, including the World Bank, the European Commission, and UN organizations. He's a former school teacher and a former teacher educator. He's been a visiting professor for Harvard, the University of Helsinki, to name a few. And he is currently the professor of educational policy at the University of South Wales in Sydney, Australia. He has literally researched around the world, and if he hasn't actually visited the country, he's worked with people from different countries. So he's really got a wealth of international policy information within his theories. These are some different books that he writes. The one we're going to focus on for this presentation is In Teachers We Trust. And this In Teachers We Trust really talks about building a climate of trust between leaders and followers. In this case, teachers and educational leaders, but really the information and the principles in this book could transfer to organizations, leaders, and followership. Some of his major reform ideas um, really revolve around the climate of education, but we could even say the climate of an organization. So cultivating trust in all stakeholders, making sure that there is autonomy and freedom uh, for leaders and followers, tolerating diversity, and actually seeking out diversity to have different experiences with different people in different places. Joyful teaching and learning, which is a finished principle that reappears again and again in his literature that he writes. An idea of no competition, no standardization, but rather giving everyone what they need to further their own individual learning. And then talking about responsibility compared to accountability and thinking about that self-directed component of learning that is part of responsibility, whereas accountability is a competitive drive. It's, it's something that's produced from competition. And then lastly, holistic education, looking at a person as a whole, not just focusing on math and reading, but looking at all subjects equally so that we can foster talents of each individual learner. Theories of teaching versus theories, theories of learning versus theories of teaching and how strong of a correlation there are. In the research that we've been reading for this text from Knowles, or for this class from Knowles, Gage recognizes this distinction where learning theories address methods of learning, but teaching theories address methods employed to influence learning. Posse Salberg really goes between the two. He focuses on both joyful teaching and joyful learning. He looks at the leaders and the followers or the organization and those that are helping to work within it. Um, his research addresses both teaching and learning, and that's from the lens of Finnish education reform. In his book, In Teachers We Trust, he talks about seven principles, along with co-author uh, Timothy D. Walker. His first one is educating teachers to think, but I would say that educating followers to think is really a transferable to any organization, to think for themselves, to have their own ideas, to have creativity. Mentoring the next generation, like we read about in many of the case studies, it's important for leaders to have a succession plan. And so mentoring the person that is currently a follower or part of the leadership team is extremely essential if we are going to have a culture of trust. Free within a framework, create a framework, but allow some freedom within that framework. Number four, cultivating responsible followers or learners. In other words, giving learners that opportunity to be self-directed as we read about for the readings of our course. And then you'll see this in yellow, you can see all of the shared, collaborative, being authentic, trusting, mutual planning, experiencing and inquiry. All of these yellow really speak to the idea of a climate where there is trust between leaders and followers. You can even see here that competitive is another way that standardization talks about this pedagogical approach. And that really has no place in an andragogical approach. And it doesn't have a place in the research of Posse Salberg either. In the video we're about to watch, we're going to address the idea that accountability is something that is left when responsibility is taken away. And I want you to think while you're watching it, do we actually need accountability in a climate where there is mutual trust between leaders and followers? 
Posse Salberg is going to mention claims where standardization is part of a germ. That stands for Global Education Reform Movement. And that's really where we're talking about standardization and testing that's been commonplace in many educational systems, including the U.S., for the past 20 to 30 years. And he feels that this is infecting our teaching, our learning, and our performance. Standardization actually ends up narrowing the curriculum and that a major uh, goal of ours should be to nurture everyone's own individual talents. So let's see what he has to say in the video here. Until the late 1960s, spins were still emerging from the cocoon of Soviet influence. Most children left public school after six years. The rest went to pi private schools, academic grammar schools, or folk schools, which tended to be less rigorous. Only the privileged or lucky got a quality education. Sound familiar? Then a major overhaul of deep structure leading to a revolutionary change in the organization of education occurred. In 1963, the Finnish parliament made the bold decision to choose public education as its best shot at economic recovery. Salberg called this the big dream of Finnish education. It was simply the idea that every child would have a very good public school. If we want to be competitive, we need to educate everybody. It all came out of a need to survive. I could actually mention three things. Um why Finland is doing so well. My presentation is not so much about this, but let me mention three things why um, why Finland is doing particularly well in education. We have always been um, open to learn from other countries. The United States has been one of the great inspirations for Finland. So this openness to learn has been one key. The second thing is that we have never wanted to be number one. In, in Finland, we have put uh, the principle of having a good public school for everybody, all the children, uh, as a priority before be, uh, trying to beat everybody uh, everybody else. And then thirdly, we have taken teachers seriously. In other words, we uh, um, require that everybody, each and every teacher, must have a, a master's degree. We respect them, we give them autonomy in the school uh, and pay them well. So It's an entirely different climate, a climate of trust that we're looking at from his research and understanding that where his research comes from is greatly different than some of the other researchers that we have been studying. Do this. All right. In Finland, we understand actually our definition for accountability is that accountability is something that is left when responsibility is taken away. Right. Accountability is something that is left when responsibility is subtracted. So that's why in my country we speak much more about responsibility rather than um, uh, accountability. And then the third one, the third symptom of, of uh, the global education reform movement is standardization of education. So we standardize everything, teaching and learning and performance of teachers and schools and so on. And that's why we end up in a narrowing curriculum and focusing on uh, preparing teachers and people for, uh, for the tests. So what can we do to um, kill the germ or prevent our schools to be uh, infected? I have, I have proposed that we should uh, put the finding everybody's own talent as a, as a first priority in the school and the task, the goal of the, the education uh, system in, in the future. So not only are we going to put everyone's talents first and, and find everyone's talents, but we're also not going to stress people out. And here are some quotes that really speak to his culture. There's an old Finnish saying, those things you learn without joy, you will forget easily. The joyful, illiterate children of Finland who do not start school until age seven enjoy hours of free play and exploration of nature publicly funded in schools. These quotes were literally ripped from the research when learning about schools in Finland. They speak to the culture that underlies the deep structure of their school system. It's harder to get into primary school education than a medical program. When we compare teachers to other professions in society, we compare them to lawyers or doctors or architects. 
There are no mandated standardized tests in Finland, apart from one exam at the end of student senior year in high school. There are no rankings, no comparisons, or competition between students, schools, or regions. Children from wealthy families with lots of education can be taught by stupid teachers. We try to catch the weak students. It's deep in our thinking. Many schools are small enough so that teachers know every student. If one method fails, teachers consult with colleagues to try something else. Children learn better when they are ready. Why stress them out? Indeed, why stress any learner out, whether they are Until adult the late- learners or they are young learners? Really thinking about why that's so important that we're creating a climate of trust where there isn't a lot of stress. Um, in his book excerpt, In Teachers We Trust, Posse Selberg and Timothy D. Walker state um, that it's really important to experience another school system because it challenges you. Your thinking shifts. You begin to see the purpose of education differently. You start to question long-held assumptions about best practices in education. You learn to appreciate the things you can easily take for granted in your native land. So Salberg and Walker switched places. Salberg left Helsinki and went to Boston, Massachusetts, and Walker left Arlington, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston, and went to Helsinki. And they researched together in opposite places. And you'll see that experiential learning, they talk quite frequently about the importance of experiencing diverse places and, and diverse learning. A climate of trust leads to flexibility. They also discuss in their research the idea that Those education systems that had more flexible structures and more trust in their teaching staff experienced less disruptive teaching and found better pedagogical solutions to keep children learning while school buildings were closed. In other words, where teachers are trusted, schools are more agile during turbulent situations. And I would venture to guess that where organizations have trusted staffs, if when things go wrong, their their organization experiences less tumultuous things that happen when they are able to trust their staff. So when unexpected situations arise, this trusting climate is essential. Um, When we look at Posse Salberg within the research of all the other authors that we've read, he talks about mentoring the next generation and educating teachers or, or whom we might think of as followers to think and to trust in their thinking. So really trusting our followers. Um, Noel's, mentions that characteristics of innovative organizations include open flow. He talks about how feelings should be expressed and how everything should be multi-directional. You, you can go to people that are up, leaders in the middle, followers, but really feelings are expressed and, and you really talk about, talk to everyone because that's how innovation arises. And like Posse Salberg said, it's important to teach people how to be with one another maybe one of the most important things. And I think that Peter Nordhaus would certainly agree, seeing as he discussed a lot about emotional intelligence and how this appears to be an extremely important construct and the idea that followers and leaders work together to achieve common goals. Now, Waldron mentions life experiences may socialize individuals to be emotionally discerning, empathetic, and resilient. And resilient followers are hopeful, optimistic, and emotionally flexible. And again, Salberg asserts that we need diverse experiences to truly understand ourselves and to understand what we have in other places. So thinking how these four fit together for the leader-follower relationships, teaching followers to actually think for themselves to get that divergent thinking and innovative ideas, and then fostering emotional intelligence. And all of them, I feel, would agree that experiences matter. If you would like to learn more about GERM, feel free to click this link for a pamphlet that is made about GERM and Posse Salberg with interactive links to take you to more information. Here are some references, and I thank you for listening to this presentation.